carnivores, spiderettes, and arachnids. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. So today I'm going to show you how to make this super easy, super lovely poncho. How's that for a twirl? So listen, for this example I used Karen Cakes in the Strawberry Kiwi colorway. You know I love this yarn. No, I'm not sponsored, but I still love this yarn. I can't get enough of it. And it works up super easy, super fast, and you can use whatever kind of yarn you want, whatever hook goes with your gauge. Have fun with it. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so let's get started. So I'm going to use, this is pistachio, the colorway pistachio of the Karen Cakes. Um, love the greens in this one. And uh, I'm using a size I crochet hook like so. And what you're going to need to do is start off with a chain of 60. And I already did that. And because we're going to be working in the round from the get-go, you need to make sure that your chain is not twisted. Okay, very, very important. Otherwise, you're going to create a Mobius strip. All right, so I did my chain of 60, as you can see. And the easiest way to make sure that your chain is not twisted is to literally follow it along, making sure that it is not twisted. You know, I know it, it sounds uh, <laughs> a bit self-explanatory, but, you know, it works. All right, and we're going to need to do a slip stitch into the first chain, like so. And this is actually going to be, ironically, uh, the hardest round of the whole piece. And then after that, it is so easy. So I got my hook in there. And we do a slip stitch, like so. All right. Now... going to start by chaining up of three. One, two, three, which is going to count as our first double crochet. And then into that same stitch, we're going to do two more double crochets. So right down in here. Like so. So that's one double. And one more double. Now, the reason why that this is going to be tricky is because we need to make sure to go through both loops of the chain, and that way it'll make the neckline a bit neater. All right, so now we've done our cluster of three, which is essentially the basis of, uh, you know, like the granny stitch and so forth. So now we chain one. All right. And we're going to skip a chain down here, which would be this one right here. So we're going to skip a chain and we're going to go into the next with three double crochets. And we're going to do that all the way around. And like I was saying, that you want to go through both loops of each chain, okay? You don't want to just go through the one, because it won't look as nice, believe you me. All right. And so we're just going to be doing this the entire way around, doing three double crochets in every other chain. Chain one, skip a chain, and go into the next chain, like so, making sure that the work does not get twisted. You know, it's, it's, not entirely vital, but it is important. In fact, I just twisted it just now. See, it is easy 
to make that mistake. So you want to go slow with this part of the project. Now, I will say that because later on, you will be able to go like a veritable speed demon. Trust me. And I'm not going to do this entire first round on camera, but I just want to do a couple more so that you actually, you know, see what it is that I am doing. You see? It's really not that bad, but you do need to be careful this first round, you know, in particular. You know, making sure that the, the chain is not twisted and that you are going through both loops of each chain. So, not that bad. You know, and if for whatever reason you did, and if you don't like it, you know, it's not the end of the world. You can always undo it really easy and start over. All right, so. Like I said, you know, starting here with your chaining up of three, two more into that same stitch, skip a chain, you know, and you chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and you're always skipping one chain at the base there, okay? So I'm going to work my way all the way around, and when I reach all the way around, I will show you what to do next. Alrighty, so I'm almost done, and I worked my way along, and so I just have one more cluster to do. So I chained one, skip one chain, go into the next with my three double crochets, always being sure to go through both loops within that chain. And because I did a total of 60 chains, and because we're skipping every other chain, that means that I have a total of 30 of these clusters. So I chained one, and now we just need to connect with a slip stitch to the top of this chaining of three, like so. And slip stitch into there. Ta da! Alright, so for this, as I've said, we have a total of 30 of these clusters, you know, starting with an original chain of 60. Now, you can make this project as big or as small as you want to. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's really not difficult. You just need a number of chains that's divisible by two because we're going to need to have 15 on one side, 15 on the other to begin with. And I will show you what I mean. So now because we need to start in the middle uh, in between two clusters, we're just going to slip stitch over across. Really quite simple. So slip stitch into the next stitch, going over, slip stitch into the next, and then slip stitch into this space here, like so. All right, now we're going to work our way up to the next round. So we're going to chain up three, one, two, three. Okay, and we're going to do two more double crochets to create our first cluster. All right, then we chain two, one, two, and do three more double crochets into that same space. And this is going to be one side, one of the growing sides of our piece. And now we need to go to the exact opposite end 
for us to do this again, which means because it's a total of 30, we need to go across 15 of these clusters, okay? So just as we did before, chain one, and we do a cluster into this space. So it's three double crochets. Chain one into the next space, three double crochets. Like so. Grab some more yarn. Chain one into the next space, three double crochets. Yeah, as long as your initial cluster count is divisible by two, you can make it whatever size you want. And I do love these clusters because once you get into the rhythm of this pattern, you won't even have to think about it. Your mind can go elsewhere, and it's, as I've often said, it's not about being mindless, it's about being mindful. And this is one of those great projects for that. All right, so let's see how many have we traversed across by now. Hmm? Let's see. All right, so counting this bottom one here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got some more to go. This part I'm going to do with you most definitely. So that was six. Going to the next space. So this is going over seven. And this will be eight. This will be nine. Ten. Of course, I always double count. Going over eleven. <clears throat> Going over twelve. Going over fourteen, and this next one should be it. course we will make sure. All right, so to make sure, here's what we do. Okay, so again, going back to the beginning, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15. Okay, so now that means in this space, you know, this cluster right here needs to be our double. So it's chaining of two. And then do in the same space another cluster. Because if we've calculated correctly, the number of clusters on this side should be also 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Aha, yes, correct. All right, so now, 
the beauty of this is that from here on in, you don't have to think about a thing. You can just let your mind go and the body will follow. So now, quite simply, now that we have this established and the other side established over here, we can just traverse our way across back to the beginning. Just doing clusters in each space. Now, another thing that you could quite conceivably do is if you have a fancier yarn, perhaps one with a bit of texture, um, you know, like a, a boucle or a homespun, um, you know, you can totally use that for this project because by and large, you are going within the spaces, not the actual stitches. Granted, when you first start off, it will be rather tricky, but once you get to where we are now, it's really quite easy. And so there are a lot of yarns that would look really, really quite nice with this pattern. All right, so we're just working our way to the very beginning. And I will show you how to go up to the next round. And that's another thing. We're not even doing rows. We're doing rounds, which also seems to make it go a bit faster, in my opinion. But that's just me. Okay, I'm just going to pull out some more yarn, and I will be right back, and we'll finish up this round together. Alrighty, so we're just going to get ourselves back to the beginning of the round, and then because we need to get into the middle of those two we're going to do some slip stitches again, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, the only drawback that I have had as far as this yarn is concerned with this particular pattern is that when you're doing the slip stitching that I'm talking about, and if the color changes, you may not like the look of it. Um, However, I found that as far as a joining method, it works best. All right, so we've reached the beginning. And now, chain one. And then again, we need to slip stitch into the third chain from the bottom. So it's this one right here, like so. So we're going to slip stitch in, all right, and then we slip stitch into the next two of our double crochets, like so, and then slip stitch into the center in between these two clusters. And there we are, and then to do the next round and every other round, you know, it, it remains the same for the entire project, which is great, you know, love it. Uh, we chain up three, one, two, three, two more double crochets to complete the first cluster, chain two, And then three double crochets in that same space, like so. So, where we have our joining here, 
this would be preferably the back of our piece, and I will show you why. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show that it's just a matter of continuing on, you know, chain one, do a cluster into this space, chain one, do another cluster into this space, you know, and, you know, it is literally the same thing every round, you know, and then of course, you know, when you work your way all the way around and you reach this point here, you would do within this space a cluster, then a chain two, and then another cluster within this space right here. Okay, and then when you go all the way around back to where we started, you would slip stitch into this top chain right there, and then slip stitch into this double crochet, this double crochet, and then into this space, and then do exactly what we did. And that is the entire piece, which, hey, what could be easier, right? So now what I was talking about with the front and the back, now, let me see here. Aha. Okay. This is the back of the piece, and I'll show you why. Those slip stitches, <clears throat> right there. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. You know, it's really not that noticeable. Um, however... Um, if you have another joining method, by all means, go for it. This is just what I personally did, and I think that it worked out rather well. Now, this is me showing you exactly what to expect. Um, if you have another method, by all means, use it. But, like I said, this is what worked for me, and this is what I did. And because it's in the back, and because this has some lovely drape and flow to it, Personally, I don't think that it would be a detriment to the project as a whole, and I still rather like it. And it is so simple, and I would love to see you guys give it a try, and I would love to see what you guys come up with. So if you like, you can share photos. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. I have a community page under Fiber Spider, as well as Instagram, and I would love to see what you guys come up with. Because, you know, ne uh, <laughs> knowledge is power, but sharing is caring, as I always say. And, until the next video, stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now!